this episode of Property Journal, I am talking to Charlie Mullins, OBE, a businessman who started a modest plumbing company from his basement in Pimlico and went on to grow it into London's largest independent plumbing company, employing over 400 staff and ultimately selling for over £140 million. Charlie has been massively successful, but like any business owner, he has had his fair share of trials, tribulations and setbacks. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. I can't wait to talk to Charlie. Charlie, welcome. John, thanks very much for inviting us here and uh, very much looking forward to it, if me I'm too. being honest. It's quite exciting. Yeah, me too. And I'm told that, um, you know, you ask the questions that others don't. <laughs> Not sure who told you that. First question, though. Who is Charlie Mullins? Well, well, Charlie Mullins, is, you, you, you can probably work me out yourself from here, but, you know, I come from a, a very poor background, like lots of people in the time, um, and uh, I become Britain's richest plumber and Britain's most famous plumber, probably most famous plumber in the world, um, and I would say probably the richest plumber in the world. And that all started from um, you know very very sort of early stage of bunking off school when I was about nine or ten, helping a local plumber, and you know he had cars, money, house, clothes, just everything, jewelry, just everything that was something we had never seen or or, or thought we'd never had. And uh, he explained to me, if I become a plumber, I'll never be out of work and I'll earn loads of money. And he's right. So I started working with him, bunking off school, two bob a day, which is 10 pence a day, plus he used to buy us lunch. And he just learned me so much more about, I would say, life skills than what I talk yeah. on on plumbing. You know, how to deal with people, um, you know, basically how to make money. Um, and he happened to be a good plumber and all, so yeah. it was a complete bonus. How long did you stay in touch with him? Because he sounds like an amazing teacher, oh, mentor. Incredible. I mean, I put everything down to, to Bill Ellis. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away, and I think in about 2009 or 10. Right. Um, and I never really caught up with him once I finished my apprenticeship. So at the working time, it was probably spread over a couple of years. Just an odd day here and there, and you know, a little bit of in, in the holiday time. But you know, I look back on it, and just one one going to work with Bill that day was, I don't know. I mean, it was just a it was just a life skills education, yeah. you know, from the moment we got in a car to, you know, just to air, he carried on with customers. And uh, he sort of worked for a lot of wealthy customers at the time, Primrose Hill, Parliament Hill Fields, Amsterdam. And, um, you know, we used to turn up these massive big asses and, and they just absolutely loved him. Everything was first names and giving him dinner and giving him tips. And I'm thinking, I don't, I don't get this, you know, yeah. I just don't get it. Proper people skills. Oh, you were learning from yeah, like incredible, and yeah. I just loved him to bits, you know. Yeah. And uh, and we finished the job, and they give me a tip, and they give you food, and they give you this, and, and they're doing the same with Bill. And I'm, I just didn't get it. I just did not get it. You know, he was a normal London rough and ready guy, mm. and um, and and I followed him a lot without even knowing. I, I went into the plumbing industry, and then somewhere along he, in his career, he, he bought us like a shop, a supermarket, mm. and I had a little bash at that myself. He was into boxing and, you know, I boxed, yeah. same as him. Um, he had a, um, a couple of divorces and, and I've had that. But the things I've, I've copied him without knowing, you know, when yeah. I've looked back on it, you know, oh, I didn't know he had a shop. Oh, I, yeah, I, I knew he boxed, but mm. all of a sudden, so my life's reflected hell of a lot on these. And, um, I find that quite strange because it's not something we would have spoke about then. He wasn't divorced and he no. didn't have a shop then. But I just, you know, when I've sort of later in life checked things out about Bill and, yeah. and it's just like mirroring him, you know. Yeah. But you spent enough time with someone. How, how old were you when you met him and started to bunk off school? And yeah, about nine to... or ten. So I'm a, I'm a dad of an 11 and 13 year old. And right now at school, they're struggling. They're struggling to be inspired and to enjoy their learning. And then they're looking at what they could do in life and from a life skills point of view, and it's a real challenge as a parent. Where were your parents with that? Did they know you were bunking off school or were you kind of hiding that from initially? You know? uh, well, my mum knew yeah. I was bunking off school. Her dad didn't, he would have gone mental. Right. Um, so she knew. Um, but, you know, there was just normal working class people. Mm. We worked in a factory. She was a barmaid and a cleaner. And um, I think they had a lot more going on that worried about rather than bunking yeah. off school kind of thing. And, you know, money was tight and that. So we was always working and yeah. I had three brothers who so was always out trying to earn some money, running errands, you know, washing cars, delivering bag wash, working in the chip shop. So the entrepreneurial side was just coming through. Yeah, but really again, young. you don't know it then. No. I mean, I'll tell you a story. That, that Opportunities, basically. That, 
I just thought was amazing at the time. And it used to worry me when I'd done it. But have you heard the word, like, errands? You do the job called an errand. Yeah, errands, yeah. Yeah, but not yeah. a lot of people, because it's an old-fashioned sort of term. Oh, and, yeah. But I used to finish school when I was at school, and, and I'd go to these shops that was just around the corner. It was the, the dairy, the sweet shop, the green grocer, uh, the calf. And... Um, they couldn't get out of their shop to go and get anything. So yeah. I'd go to the sweet shop guy. i said, what do you want? And he'd say, uh, oh, can you go to the greengrocers and get me some potatoes and veg and all this? So I'd go there. And when i get to her, I'd say to her, do you need any shopping? And she'd say, can you get me some fags? And, and, so, and so I was, like, getting double money for the same job. And then, and then, then I'd... Then they say, go to the dairy, and in the dairy, they say to me, can you get me some fags, or can you get me something? So, and oh. I thought, well, oh, oh, am I cheating these people? Because she's giving me a fruitney bit to get her the cigarettes. He's giving me a fruitney bit to get the potatoes. <laughs> I love that. The, the calf woman in the dairy is giving me another fruitney bit to get. And I think, oh, God, if they've worked this out, they're going to think I'm feeding them. And it, it concerned me, yeah. but I thought, I'll keep it to myself. And then when I look back on it now, I think, that's clever. Yeah, and everyone was happy. Everyone was happy. Wrong. Everyone was happy. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know what, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just no. a bit of, maybe it just fell that way. I don't know. No. But, you know, it was just, I'm going in the greengrocers and, and getting the stuff. And she's saying, oh, can you get me some fags? Like, oh, oh snuff. Give me some snuff and all them things. And I'm thinking, oh, she, does she know I've got, a, like, oh, these are the potatoes for him. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. And, and so, undoubtedly, at the early age, the work ethics came there. Mm. Uh, and... That definitely came from the father because there was nothing would stop him going to work. You know what I mean? He would have to be. What did know, he do? Sorry. What did your father do? Just worked in a factory moving boxes around. You know, off of a lorry on the. It was what I don't recall as a good job, but that was the job he had, and that's what he got on with. And um, you know, I, I just the, the the idea. You know, I think it was just it, it was it was very uh, uncomfortable with somebody who didn't have a job. You was looked on as a bad person if you didn't have a job, I think, them years ago, you know. Yeah. People would say, oh, well, at least he got a job, at least he got yeah. a job. So that was installed with me then. And, and you know, I used the terms, the seeds were sown then. You know, yeah. when I was helping Bill, um, whatever he was teaching me, it just, it never left me. I remember so much from, from them time. And, you know, if there's ever a saying, the seeds were sown, that was it. And, you know, I use the term, if Bill was a bank robber, I would have been a bank robber. Yeah. You know, whatever he was doing. Under his wing, learnt everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and fortunately he was a plumber. I mean, yeah. um, and, 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 and a successful plumber when I think about it, because he had all these lovely things. And, mm. and, you know, I never expected to be half as good as him. You know, I never expected to be working in these posh houses. But again, my clientele was the more wealthy people in Chelsea, Kensington, mm. Pimlico, them areas. So... It all sort of mirrored on from there. So I'm a great believer from an early age, like you say, your children, you know, what they pick up now is is possibly where they're going to lead to in the future. And I feel if they're too long at school and learning things that maybe are not of a value to them, then um, it's not necessary. I don't think it's the best way. Yes, you need an education, but, you know, you don't need logarithms and all these other business, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and, and Latin and all this business in life. What you do need is is just um, working working sort of um, experience is what I would say, you know. Yeah. You learn. But uh, it's getting it. You you actually had to leave school uh, and, uh, to get exactly. it. Exactly. And, and there's a balance, isn't there? And of course, you know, you said your father would have gone mad and then uh, what would I do? If I found out my kids were bunking off school, I guess I'd go mad. And yet they... If you're doing something that you're passionate about and you're learning and you get in early, I mean, look at you. And yeah, I mean, the journey with Pimlico, I'd love to know that. So, you've learned so much from Bill. You, you've kind of come out from under his wing. You set up uh, in an estate agent's. Um, in Pimlico? Yeah. yeah. I will look, then we move on roughly. I leave sport 15, little education, obviously, no qualifications. Realised now it was a big mistake, massive mistake. Uh, I should have left at 14 because, you know, I was always going to be a plumber. I was always gonna, you know, um, do as well as I could do at that job. That's that. That was where my future was, and um, so I left school Saturday at fifteen. Got a four-year apprenticeship right out in Rains Park, Wimbledon. So I used to get a train every day. I look back on that now, and you know, it, it, it's quite a lot to get on with for a fifteen-year-old. You make you make your way to right, Victoria every morning, train a Waterloo. I mean, train back at night, kind of thing. Mm. Go to night college or whatever they used to call it. Um, and, um, you know, got through it. And, and, and to be honest, the value of an apprenticeship, which which I've realised 
for more more or less straight away, they sign you in for three or four years, and it means you can't just leave, and they can't just get rid of you. It's a contract, and and I wanted to leave a thousand times, you know, if I weren't in contract, and they wanted to get rid of me a thousand times. But by being held in there, it it it, it got me to where I am today because I'd have been moving from job to job. So I. I value apprentices and I say to anybody if you can get an apprenticeship then you're going to be successful yeah. and earn lots of money oh, yeah that's great advice and actually just just the principle of the fact that as you said I imagine the conversations at your school you know where's Charlie oh you know call, maybe called lazy and so on when actually you're grafting working yeah it can be really misunderstood and I think I, I can parallel without doing what you did just being disinterested and frustrated at school but then working bloody hard from an adult point of view and actually striving to achieve and so on. But school wasn't inspiring for me and so on. I think there's a lot of kids caught in that trap and parents caught in the yeah, thought process of what, what do we do? Yeah, look, I think we, yes, we have to attend school and yes, we have to, you know, go to a, a certain level of, of, of education. But, you know, a lot of it is, is, I feel, is unnecessary, even in life. And I quickly learned that you get educated in the workplace. That's when your education starts because yeah. it's real. And, and what can be better than, you're sort of learning and earning at yeah. the same time. And there's a certain amount of pressure as well. It's, it's real. Like, you know, in the classroom, it's all hypothetical. Workplace, it's, it's, it's interacting with people. It's a real thing, yeah. Make a mistake, it has consequences. And, and I think now that, that, you know, not knocking people to go to university, but a lot of it's unnecessary. And, you know, they I've had them come to a job for uh, Pimlico Plumbers and, um, you know, half of them can't cross the road on their own uh, and the other half can't do their shoelace up, yeah. you know. So yeah. they've not learned anything other than behind the desk right. and... And you'll be amazed, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, I, f I feel that there's, there's life without a degree, maybe that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. But moving on, I do my apprenticeship, yep. I become self-employed, play around with a couple of, the, couple of companies I started up, had a partner, waste of time, didn't bring enough to the table. I soon realised that I can't be in a partnership, it's a working partnership. So that ended and then I carried on on my own and started building up a, a clientele. And then working in the Pimlico area with Pat Fox, Sammy Fox's dad, who was a carpenter at the time. And um, just before Sammy started, um, you know, doing her modelling, yep. I think she was 15 or 16, and he said, I'm going to take three weeks off. Um, but he never come back, he never picked a, a, a saw up again, Pat, a great carpenter. Um, and I just carried on in the Pimlico area, and I got known as the Pimlico plumber. All the work was in Pimlico and the state agents, Pimlico Properties were giving me the work. So your customers almost called you? The Pimlico Plumber. Yeah, and that turned up and go, oh, you're the Pimlico Plumber. Brilliant. So I'd love to say I thought with a name, but you know, all I'd done once I yeah. started Pimlico Plumbers was put an S on it. Yeah. And um, and then the, the, the state agents said to me, look, do you want one of these rooms in the basement? They're all like damp and grotty and, you know, but for what? I just couldn't work out. I was having, oh, I don't know what he's on about. What, what am I, what am I going to do? Mm. Now it's obvious, boom. Straight in there. Yeah. And um, anyhow, I take this room on, rent it, and I put an answering machine in it, and I'm doing jobs, running back, etc. And all of a sudden, it's starting to shape up a little bit kind of thing. I, I employed another guy helping me, and then I employed a, a retired school teacher lady um, to answer the phone because it was all clicking in, you know, posh area, someone posh on the phone. Whoa, you know, you know, plumber's picking it up, you know. It, not so good on it. And um, it just progressed from there. And I quickly learned the way forward is to employ people. Yeah. And often when many people ask me questions about, you know, how do we go forward? How do we go to the next level? And it ain't what they want to hear because it, the worst thing in, in business is employing people, but it's also the best thing. And you have to go through that stage. If you want to be successful, you've got to employ people. Yeah. Uh, certainly, certainly in the business I was in, and it worked for me. Yeah. We, I run Pimlico Plumbers, 41 years later, we're turning over 50 million, largest independent plumbing company uh, in the UK, most recognised plumbing company in the world, um, and then I sell it for about 140, 145 mil. Congratulations. And, um, and, and that to me is the ultimate. And, yeah. and did I expect to do that? No, many people say to me, could you, could you see it? No, I couldn't see it. All I could ever see me being was a plumber, and earning good money and, and doing a nice job. That's, that's what I could see at the time. But, yeah. as, you know, as things were going on, I quickly, I started seeing things, you know, when we got a million pound turnover, when we was taking on 20 people, then 50. And it's exactly how we all think the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. We'll employ one, then it's five, then it's 10, then it's 20, then it's a million. 
and then we get a bigger building. So we all think the same. It's just a matter of 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 how we get to it. There's a yeah. pot of gold. There's a pot of gold up there for everybody. Yeah. It's just can you get to it and what route do you want to take? There must have been some stories and some bumps along the way. Because I mean, I mean you, you know, you're a success story. Quite simply, from a financial point of view and from a business point of view, because so many people get business wrong, they get the people wrong. You, know, you made yeah. it clear that you couldn't have a partner, but then to choose the right people, that can be difficult because you know, you're trying to do it all yourself. Can you find someone that's going to do that right, that right? And you've got to back off. But tell me some of the... Um, so well, tell me some of the... Undoubtedly, may not, many, not, many sleepless nights. I'm yeah. not going to kid anybody on that. You know, where are we going to get the rent from? Can I pay the staff? Am I going to pay the mortgage? Oh, these people owe me money. You know, so there's there's a lots of um, you know it's a bumpy road to, to success, yeah. and uh, but of course every time you, you hit a bump and you get knocked down, you're going to learn from it. I mean, I I, I, I see some guy the other week um, who, who come and listened to me talk. Funny enough, and he'd written a book. You know, failure breeds success, and I thought myself, well, you know what, you got that spot on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know. Um, Lots of difficulties, like bank managers, which, you know, I, I believe are crooks in suits. Um, you know, they just, you know, they run your business and, and they, they try and destroy you and, you know, create. And at the time, as business was going well, in, in 1990, 91, I bought a premises. We moved out of Pimlico and I found this premises in Lambeth, a quarter of a million pound, and I borrowed the money from the bank. And... Three months later, there's a recession. And I'm like, I must have been the only one not to see this recession. All of a sudden, the bank want their money back. The house hasn't got the equity in it. I ripped it apart of the office. And they put us under tremendous pressure. Um, and we nearly, the company went nearly bust. We went and see two liquidators. I changed the can and I changed staff. I changed the way we worked. It just, you know, we, we just didn't have it right, if I'm being honest. But you've got to go through this... Yeah. You know, you can't just make things work. And then, um, you know, we, we just about got through through this recession at the time. Um, and I had no option but to get through. I was going to lose my house. I was going to lose the business. I was in debt. Uh, you know, I'd have been probably out of work also. And so, you know, I, I but one liquidator said, pack it all in. You haven't got no money. And the other liquidator said, um, you need to fight for it because if not, you're going to lose everything. And when you got an house, and I think I had three children at the time, you know, that, that's a worrying thought, you know, to think. Yeah. I've got other people who've gone bust and saying to me, oh, we're sitting there watching telly, and the bailiffs come in and start taking their telly away. He said, it heartbreak. And he was crying his eyes out when he told me that, and I thought to myself, I can't face that. I cannot do it. So I've done everything possible, put everything into it, stepped up a gear, and, and started being a lot more serious in business. And three, four years down the line, or somewhere a million, two, three, four, and then I, I'm going to say after about four years of going wrong, it just went like that. Very, very sort of gradual, very organic. But I become a lot more. People use the word ruthless, rude, arrogant, whatever you want to use it. It don't really matter. But I became a lot more business minded, focused, focused. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you have to do in business, and it's, I thank you for being so open and sharing that because there's a success story behind you, but clearly it nearly didn't happen, right? Yeah. Um, but juggling business, life, and and having a life as well, it sounds like at that time and you know at most times in your career, how did you how did you juggle that? How did you make time for family and yeah? No, things? I mean you're right. Look, um, I ain't gonna deny on that. I think you know I, I was a workaholic, um, and. Uh, you know, I just see it at the time, if I can provide good things for my family, like, you know, cars, nice home, all of these, you know, clothes, and all the nice bits. Again, going back to the build days, yep. you know, and, and that, was, that was my intention, just to provide, you know, good thing. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, wanting to better your life or wanting to have your family have, a, have, a, have nicer things in life. And once they started flowing in, I'm thinking, God, this is, this is amazing, you know what I mean? And yes, it's worth all the sleepless nights. Yes, it's worth all the worrying. Um, and, and I'm a great believer that when somebody's successful, that something goes on the way. You know, it could be your health, it could be your finances, it could be your friends, your family, um, marriages, relationships. Um, I'm pretty convinced that happens for most people. Something has to go. And 
Um, you know, on mine was a couple of marriages that, that went by the wayside. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, that, that I think, you know, first marriage I put too much into the work. And, and if I'm being honest, when I become um, successful, it goes to your head, you know what I mean? Because all of a sudden you think, you know, and, you know, unfortunately, in, you know, that marriage sort of ended. Um, but, you know, you know, then the second one was or it just shouldn't have been kind of thing. Um, but where I am today, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for where I am today mm. and I'm grateful the way it's gone kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? There's, there's not been much damage on the way other than a couple of marriages. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. from a success point of view, from a business point of view, from a financial point of view, it's a massive tick. What is your definition of success now? I'm asking that because that aspirational Charlie was built at the beginning, the cars, the big houses and so on. You've done that. You've got it. Um, you've achieved that almost sort of kudos of being successful in business and so on. But what's your definition of success? Well, that's an awkward one because you know, do do you sort of quantify it on on material things? And from my where I come in life, yes, that's where I quantify it. That you know, yes, I could have a good life. Yes, I could buy a nice houses. Yes, I go where I want. You know, spend what I want, kind mm. of thing. To me, that's success. Mm -hmm. But other people see look at it differently and. And now I'm at a stage where, uh, even though I'm very busy now and and you know enjoying the what I'm doing kind of thing, um, you know I don't need to do it kind of thing. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because um, that's me. You know I'm not the retiring type, um, and, and most entrepreneurs are not. They just yeah. want to keep going. Um, I'm also doing it for my family. We're going to start up another service company for the family. Uh, we've got another eighteen months in the clause to go and. and they will absolutely smash. So you're not it. done yet. Oh no, you're joking. I mean, I was never the type going to be sitting in a chair reading no, a book with slippers on, and um, and I think that's fine. You know, yeah. people used to say to me, "Oh, you're greedy, Charlie. You're this, that, and the other. You know, you never stop working and that and the other." Well, there's nothing wrong with being greedy. You know, long as long as you share things out and long as you put something back into society. Um, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have yeah. a better life. Isn't that being motivated as well? Like, I, you know, I was going to ask you what gets you out of the bed in the morning. Yeah, you, know, well, you look like you keep uh, fit. You, you look you're sharp. Still yeah. got a twinkle in I your mean, eye. Exactly. You know, I mean, you know, so 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 many of my friends have got. You know, they look good jobs at the time when we left school. They was working in like soup shops and shops and 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 you know other places. And and I was getting three quid a week, and they're getting twelve quid a week. And I'm like, I've got to get with them, and I, you know, what I mean, and. Uh, again, it was explained to me at the time by a plumber. He said, "What you don't earn as an apprentice, you'll get later in life." And it's so true. Timing. It's so true. And and he said, "You know, your friends will still be working in that shop. You know, moaning their head off that they didn't get a trade kind yeah. of thing." And he's right. And you know, I, I learned in life we all learn from somebody. And I, you know, I pick up things kind of thing which you have to. You've got to be alert. And you know, yeah. wherever I go, I will see something or something, and I'll put that to you. So. We all learn off somebody, and and like like these these type of you know interviews, someone will see something and they go, you know what, I'm going to do that and do yeah. this, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. No. We all learn off of somebody. Yeah, no, you're right, and it's it's having people to talk to, and actually that's really relevant. We're filming in the Jack J A A Q. All oh, right, just ask a question for mental health social media platform, which I know you've been finding out about from today, and there are people that don't have people around them they can talk to. Now, from your point of view, we were talking business, but whether it's just finding out about life and whether they might be suffering from depression or anxiety and what is it so you had that incredible experience of being able to have bill as your mentor yeah but bringing it back to jack and being able to ask questions in private no comments no likes what do you think of that as a, as well, a concept uh, i can't wait to um you know have a go here because there's certain things i'd like to know about you know yeah. maybe private and and other things but your own mental health i've been interested to know that you've been through you know, you mentioned the two two divorces. Yeah. You've got your business journey. Have you always focused on positive mindset? It seems to come naturally. You exude a positivity, and, and you know, is, is that something you worked on, or just comes naturally no, to you? I'm not going to say it's natural. Because, I mean, I was a shy kid. I couldn't walk across the, a room when I was 15 or 16. I couldn't walk across a room and, and get a biscuit. I couldn't accept anything. Um, I think it's it, 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 as I say, when you go in the workplace. Mm. That's where you get educated. And I think what what I didn't pick up at school, I wanted to make sure I got in the workplace. And, you know, I, I think one of the one of the one of the you know, I, I would never have been classed as a confident person. 
But but in between is as I left school, I joined a boxing club, and you know that teaches you so much. You know discipline, and uh, obviously to have a row when you need to. Um, takes some aggression out as well, right? It takes some yeah, frustration, of course, anger. You know, I mean, yeah. but it also learns you not to take liberties with anything. You know, you're yeah. not a, you know, it gives you principles and that. So I learned a lot through boxing, you know, because it's very regulated and, and you know, you need to know how to behave to a box kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that learned me a lot. And, and, and then I think what we've, with Bill before that and then my own work ethics, you know, for the family and then with Bill, then the boxing and, and then the apprenticeship. I mean, you learn so much there. I mean, because you're always being told what to do, you know, and, and like, you know, I used to hate building sites, so I, I, I made a pledge to myself, when I finish my apprenticeship, I'll never work on a building site again, and that was the case, you know, it wasn't for me. Um, and when I worked in private house, I thought, God, you know, you've got to do this, warm, cup of tea, nice people. So you sort of, you know, your mind starts to sort of think of what you want in life, and, and, and you know, we do have a choice, you know, we do have a choice, you yeah. know, we, 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 but of course you've got to work hard for, for certain things or, or direct yeah. yourself to it. But I would say I, was, I wouldn't, definitely weren't a confident person, but I become confident. And, you know, one of my worst nightmares would have been something like this or stand on the stage talking. Um, it, I, you, you know, I, I just couldn't have done it years ago. Now I can get up and do it, but bearing in mind, um, you know, I know what I'm talking about kind of thing. And, there ain't many people that I know of anyhow um, that start a business from nothing and get 150 mil at the other end and can sit here and talk the story about it. So, you know, the, the difference is with me now is that, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about kind yeah. of thing, yeah. yeah. Um, and and got... people respect that, you know, and, and I'm all for, you know, helping anybody. If anybody that wants to copy me, pick things up of me, please just do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know... It, it, that's how we learn. Yeah. You're sharing so much now. That was one of the big inspirations for me with this program. Was to, you know, I'm learning from you right now, and anyone watching is, yeah. is learning. I'll be honest with you. I've I've loved talking to you. I've found you inspirational, you know, and you passed on a lot of information. And thank you, thank you so much. Thanks very much for for listening to us. And, Pleasure. You know, good luck to everybody that wants to have their own business. I mean, there's no business like your own business. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>